I'm in the uh, IABM lounge at Broadcast Asia in Singapore, and with me is Peter Bruce, uh, director of APAC for IABM. And we're going to talk about what the IABM has been doing here for its members and for SES to show organizers. Peter. Yes, I mean, this year we've had certainly increase in uh, activity for the IABM and uh, helping out the members. Uh, we, for I think something like eight or nine years we've done our networking event starting off in the pump room and we've got a, a great attendance for that. Uh, but additionally to the market intelligence morning breakfast, sea level of breakfast morning uh, that we did on Wednesday, Thursday we did a very well attended uh, uh, technology presentation and open discussions, some very lively debates from uh, uh, very senior people from our member companies and uh, that was quite exciting about UHD and IPTV and uh, uh, presentations from Stan. Uh, on, on top of that we've got exhibition task group which we'll be doing on the Friday uh, and also uh, I've just come out of uh, uh, APAC council meeting so, uh, so, we, so we've, we've also done more there. Peter, remind me, what was, the, what was the thorny issue that everyone was really discussing this morning? Yeah, well, of, of course, uh, w when you talk about IP and you talk about, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 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 alliances like AIMS and ASPIN and so forth, uh, it, you know, the, that, that was a lot of the debate. What was great to see, I mean, we, we had last year new members from Korea, which was uh, K2E, for example, who were also there talking about t a 12 gig SCI. So uh, I exciting stuff, as they very passionate. So, uh, hopefully having that debate will we'll move things in the debate forward. And I guess in some ways for, for us, uh, that's kind of validated our certification scheme, that there, there are so many organizations out there trying to push through standards for IP, if I can use that phrase, that, that, as you say, there's almost too much diversification, not enough focus to actually produce real results in the timescales that broadcasters want. Yeah, well, 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 this is one of also one of the points. I mean, there's standards and there's people pushing uh, standards, but, but one of the things that Tim Fowler said was, you know, the uh, uh, AIMS is not a standard body, it's an alliance. And uh, much like the uh, 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 Ultra High Definition Alliance, you know, uh, basically what we're, let's say, uh, uh, supporting and uh, uh, is really, you know, people collaborating together. Uh, one of our, I mean, not only that, one of our videos we have, for example, is uh, Grass Valley with EMC. Uh, you, you'll see some of the blogs where, where they're, they're collaborating, collaborating together. Uh, yeah, as well. So, uh, so if if you know, of course, the IBM as a trade association, if we can help that process, that will also push business and uh, uh, or the business decisions to purchase faster. So, yes. Can you tell us a bit more about developing a new type of relationship between IABM and SES for Broadcast Asia? Yeah, sure. I mean, the what, what we're doing this year. Uh, you know, is, is really a start of a, a kind of a bigger relationship uh, ramping up next year. So, yeah, as I mentioned, obviously we've got IBM TV, we're doing a, uh, several events, uh, you know, and, and helping uh, the transition for the uh, IBM companies and all, all the companies over to Suntech next year. As part of that, and, uh, you know, as press release that went out about uh, our relationship and the contracts we signed, that uh, next year we're going to uh, let's say be involved in the conference sessions. Uh, we will have a, a, a kind of a higher amount of uh, TV activity and we're perhaps talking of a mini studio and uh, IP streaming and uh, you know, also uh, other kind of events and activities that we'll be doing. So we'll increase that, uh, you know, the activities for Broadcast Asia and uh, IABM as well. Now, I think uh, if I'm right, um through uh, feedback we've had from members, uh, the length of the show has also changed for next year. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, we the the last two years, and uh, we we've been we've been doing in Broadcast Asia what we do at NAB and IBC. We have exhibition task group, and we get the, those marketing people uh, together, uh, discuss what we like and don't like about the show, and one of the key. Uh, or the two key issues was uh, one people are not uh, happy particularly with level four in broadcast Asia and they wanted to make a move to Suntech which is what is happening and uh, additionally 
uh, yeah, everybody felt unanimously in, in, in the, those discussions uh, that three, three days was a more appropriate time. So let, let's see what uh, some of our members uh, you know, uh, have thought about the show. Uh, Broadcast Asia is a very important platform for us, especially in this region. We all know that uh, there's a two major shows in our industry, NAB in Vegas in April and then IBC later on in September. Right, but not a lot of customers from the region get to go to the trade shows like that. So for us, right, Broadcast Asia is particularly important for customers from Southeast Asia, the Sunk region, coming to you know have a taste of what we introduce at NAB, what's the latest technologies that we have. So yeah, it's a very important show for us. What we're seeing that you know from from the first day till now, right, where if, even when we expected day three to be a little bit low on crowd, it's been spectacular. The quality of the crowd is really good too, right. Customers really looking at the solutions they want to, really wanting to understand what we offer. So it's been it's been wonderful. It's been exceptional. And Broadcast Asia is moving from Marina Bay Sands here to SunTech City next year. What's your view on that? We welcome that for sure. Right, SunTech has always been a, a venue that we liked uh, before it was moved over here to to Marina Bay Sands. I think because of the venue itself is very accessible to a majority of the people, more restaurants for people to eat as well. Right, and the layout of the booth, the layout of the entire show at, uh, at, at Suntec is more welcoming. So I think it's the biggest show for us in the region. Um, these past three days have been excellent. We've had many of our customers come by, many new prospects, and it's overall been a great show. That's good to hear. In terms of APAC as a region, is, how important is that to Bright Cove right now? I think it's the fastest growing region for Bright Cove. We've been fortunate enough to be one of the first players in the market and we have some of the largest OTT platforms on our product. Uh, it's a great show for us to bring all the country around Singapore. Uh, after Singapore, we're talking about Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, etc. to get all our customers seeing the latest of, te of our technologies. And uh, next year, Broadcast Asia is moving to Suntec City. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so uh, we, we used to exhibit in Suntec uh, many years ago, so I have nothing against that. But it's true that Communication staying here. We're wondering how we're going to get all the people together because so many of our customers are in Communication, our partner as well. So um, that's going to create some loss of time for many people, I guess. Yeah. This Broadcast Asia is actually bringing a lot of business to us, and we see a lot of overseas uh, customers this time. Yeah. And so far, how, uh, what's the quality of the visitors been like? Oh yeah, I should say that this time the quality is good and uh, yeah, I find that it's, it's, it's as good as, uh, as before now. Yep. Okay, that's good to hear. And next year it's moving to Suntec City. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, actually, I get a lot of feedback from vendors say that actually Suntec City will be a good location. Yeah, and uh, they prefer that place actually. You see the Asia market is one where we can see significant growth um, over the coming year or two and also to make sure that we're um, seeing our existing customers in this market. Uh, overall, it's a very interesting time uh, from a technology perspective with the trends away from SDI towards IP and virtualization. Uh, and we're here to find out what this market really wants in terms of those new technologies. Uh, the customers here um, it are the ones that are really looking to expand within within the Asian market. So we've been actually been having COO and CTO discussions with individuals that have come from Europe and from North America um, that are really looking at their services and their expansion within the Asian market. So it's quite interesting to see. APAC is approximately 30% of our total uh, turnover for Grass Valley. So it's a really important market. Uh, we have a key uh, uh, regions that are really a stronghold like Southeast Asia, um, here in Singapore and Malaysia, uh, China, Japan, and then also in Australia. Australia is a really important market for us. Uh, we just um, signed a very large contract in Australia, one of the largest in Grass Valley's history. So we're really proud of that and we're working very closely with our Asian team.